lecture series and this is going to be the chapter 15 hereditary fundus dystrophy part 4 and in this part we are going to discuss about the stargardt disease or fundus flebi uh, maculatus introduction stargardt disease or juvenile macular dystrophy and fundus flevi maculatus ffm are regarded as a variant of the same disease and together constitute the most common macular dystrophy so basically uh, ffm or uh, stargardt disease is a very uh, common macular dystrophy it is common cause of a central visual loss in adults under the age of 50 years so it usually occur in uh, adult or uh, middle age and it is very common cause of a central visual loss in the age under less than 50 years the condition is characterized by the uh, uh, accumulation of the lipofuscin within a rpe so there is a uh, pigment deposition which is a lipofuscin within rpe and which causes the changes in the retina three types are re uh, recognized target disease one autosomal recessive is the most common and is usually caused by the mutation in the abca4 gene stargard disease three autosomal dominant and stargard disease four a autosomal dominant are uncommon and are related to different gene presentation is uh, typically in childhood or adolescence but sometimes later so most of the time the uh, uh, patient present in childhood or adolescent and sometimes later the prognosis is uh, for the maculopathy is poor and once the visual acuity drops below uh, 6 by 12 it tends to worsen rapidly before stabilizing at about 6 by 60 Patients with flex in the early stage have a relatively good prognosis and may remain uh, asymptomatic for many years until the development of a macular disease. So prognosis is generally poor for the maculopathy and the patient whose drop visual equity drops uh, uh, less than 6 by 12 usually gets stable at 6 by 60 and those who present early with the flex have relatively uh, sta remain stable for many years. Diagnosis consists of symptoms, gradual impairment of a central vision that may be out of proportion to examination finding, malingering may be suspected, there may also be complaints of a reduced color vision and impairment of a dark adaptation. So there will be the impairment of the uh, central vision and uh, there can be like a, a malingering, even the malingering can be suspected because there are uh, no, uh, no appropriate features in the retina. There may be complaints of a reduced uh, color vision so there will be the decreased color vision and there will be the impairment of dark adaptation so what are the signs the macula may be initially normal or may show non-specific motling progressing to an oval snail slime or beaten bronze appearance and subsequently to geographic atrophy that may tend to bull's eye configuration a small proportion develop as uh, choroidal neovascularization so uh, early it may uh, the fundus may appear normal and often sometimes there can be pigment motling can be seen like a uh, beaten bronze material and which can subsequently lead to geographical atrophy or when there is a geographical atrophy there is a formation of cnv can happen numerous white yellow or white round oval or pissy uh, form fish shape lesion at the uh, level of rpe this may be confined to posterior pole or extend to the mid periphery new lesion develop as older one become ill-defined and atrophy so let's see figure 15.17 a is showing us a, a non-specific uh, macular motling b is showing us a snail slime maculopathy surrounded by flex so this is a flex and there is a snail slime appearance C is showing posse bullseye baculopathy surrounded by flex and note the uh, beaten bronze paramacular appearance. So uh, it is appearance as the uh, bronze has been beaten and D is showing us a geographic atrophy and E is showing us a posterior pole flex. F is showing a posterior pole flex extending up to the mid periphery. Investigation visual field may show central loss and micropyrimetry may, uh, can uh, accurately document progression. OCT will demonstrate fleck and atrophies. Uh, FAF show characteristic appearance with hyper autofluorescent flecks and peripapillary and macular uh, hypo autofluorescence and may be key to the diagnosis in early cases. 
so oct will show the flex and a trophy and uh, the uh, fundus autofluorescence will show as a hyper autofluorescent flex and there can be the peripapillary and macular hypo autofluorescence ERG for topic is normal to subnormal scotopic may be normal so basically this uh, because the central vision is getting affected so uh, ERG uh, will show the photopic will become normal to subnormal whereas scotopic will be normal EOG is commonly subnormal especially in advanced cases so FA show a clinical dark choroid so dark choroid is because the uh, underlying uh, choroidal fluorescein is not visible because of the uh, because of the lipophus skin within the RPE. The classic feature is a dark choroid due to the masking of the background choroidal fluorescein by diffuse RPE abnormality. The macula show mixed hyper and hypofluorescence. Fresh flex um, show early hypofluorescence uh, due to blockage and late hyperfluorescence due to staining and old flex show rpe window defect so old defect will show us a, a window defect whereas a fresh flex will show early hypofluorescence uh, due to blockage and late hyperfluorescence due to staining indocyanin green angiography show hypofluorescent spot often more numerous than seen clinically Starker disease is the most commonly inherited macular dystrophy and is usually associated with mutation in the abca4 gene so what is the treatment general measures should be considered as for rp protection where excessive high energy light exposure may be particularly important vitamin a supplementation is avoided at, as it may accelerate lipofuscin accumulation gene therapy is usually a using a lenti viral vector for abca4 uh, and stem cell trials have been initiated and show promising early results so this is an imaging in the uh, Stargar disease or fundus flavi maculata. So A is showing us a central visual field loss. B is showing us OCT showing RPE and outer uh, retinal atrophy sparing the fovea. So there is an outer retinal atrophy. C is showing us an FAF showing us a macular autofluorescence and surrounding flex. The black areas in the macular represent RPE atrophy. So this is showing us an RPE atrophy and there is a hypo autofluorescent as well and surrounding flex. D is showing FFA is showing hyperfluorescent spot and a dark choroid. So choroid is dark and there is a hyperfluorescent spots. Then there is a petty a crystalline corneo retinal dystrophy. Betty dystrophy uh, is an autosomal recessive. CYP4 VZ gene is characterized by deposition of crystal in the retina and the superficial peripheral cornea. It is much more common in East Asian, particularly Chinese, and in people with of other ethnic backgrounds. The mechanism may be linked to an error in the systemic lipid metabolism. The rate of progression is variable. There is no treatment. So presentation is usually in young adults with slowly progressive visual loss constitute the typical case. Signs include superficial peripheral corneal crystals. Uh, so the corneal, uh, uh, so there will be the corneal crystals will, will be superficial and peripheral. Numerous fine yellow white crystal scattered throughout the posterior fundus are followed by localized atrophy of RPE and the corneal capillaries at the macula. So there will be the uh, uh, in the uh, fundus there will be the yellow white uh, crystals that is scattered, and they are going to be the atrophy of RPE and corneal capillaries at the macula. Diffuse atrophy of the carrier capillary subsequently develop with a decrease in size and number of the crystals. So after that, there will be the diffuse uh, atrophy of choreo capillaries and there will be the decrease in the number and size of crystal. There is a gradual confluence and expansion of the atrophic areas into the periphery leading to the diffuse chorioretinal atrophy in the end state disease. So multiple atrophy will coalesce to form a big atrophy. So investigations include the visual field will show constriction, OCT demonstrate crystalline deposit and macular changes, ERG subnormal, FA in moderate disease show characteristic large hypofluorescent patches corresponding to the choriocapillaries loss with intact overlying retinal vessels. The patches may become confluent over time. So visual field will show constriction, OCT will show crystal deposits, ERG will be abnormal. 
subnormal and fa will show hyperfluorescent patches which will correspond to the uh, choreocaptoid loss and there will be the intact overlying retinal vessels so this is a petty crystalline corneo retinal crystalline dystrophy a is showing wide field imaging show crystalline deposit b is showing oct showing deposits and the macular changes and C is showing, FA, uh, showing characteristic hypofluorescent patches. So this is a hypofluorescent patches. Then there is an Alpert syndrome. Alpert syndrome is basically uh, uh, when there is an autoantibodies that are formed against the basement membrane, especially type 4 collagen. And it mostly affect the kidneys and what is basically in eyes it has certain kinds of uh, uh, problems for example it can cause uh, if we go from the cornea it causes posterior polymorphous uh, fun, uh, dystrophy it will cause anterior lenticonus it will cause uh, cataract formation it will cause um, perimacular flex so Alpert syndrome predominantly X-linked recessive is caused by mutation in the different genes, all of which encode particular forms of type 4 collagen, a major basement, basement membrane component. It is characterized by the coronic renal failure often associated with the sensory neural deafness. These are scattered yellowish punctate flecks in the perimacular area. So around the macula, there are yellowish punctate spots, which are often subtle and large peripheral flecks some of which may become confluent. The ERG is um, normal and uh, the prognosis for vision is uh, excellent. Anterior lenticonus and posterior polymorphous corneal dystrophy may occasionally be seen. So this is Alpert syndrome A is showing us a perimacular fleck. So you can see there is a macular flap and B is showing us a um, peripheral flex. Then there is a familial blind, uh, benign fleck uh, retina. Familial benign fleck retina, benign fleck retina syndrome is a very, a very rare autosomal recessive disorder. It is asymptomatic and so usually discovered by chance. Numerous diffusely distributed yellow-white polymorphous lesions where the fovea and extend to the far periphery. The flecks show autofluorescence are probably composed of lipofuscin. The ERG is normal and the prognosis is excellent. So this is a benign uh, familial fleck retina so it is an occasional finding and patient is usually asymptomatic next is a congenital stationary night blindness so congenital stationary night blindness is when the uh, when there is a night blindness that is present congenitally and it is usually stationary and it has two appearance with the normal fundus and with an abnormal fundus and abnormal fundus has a two types which is augachi disease and fundus lb punctus so congenital stationary night blindness refers to a group of disorders characterized by the infantile onset nectolopia which is a night blindness but non-progressive retinal dysfunction the fundus appearance may be normal or subnormal so there can be with the normal fundus appearance congenital stationary night blindness with the normal fundus appearance is sometimes classified into type 1 and which is complete and type 2 which is incomplete form that are generally due to mutation in the different gene the former is characterized by the complete absence of a rod pathway function and essentially normal cone function clinically and on erg the later by impairment of both rod and cone function so there will be uh, uh, absence of the rod function and sometimes uh, with the almost normal cone function and after that there will be both rod and cone dysfunctions mutation in numerous genes have been implicated with excellent recessive autosomal dominant autosomal recessive pattern the autosomal dominant form is usually associated with normal visual equity but many autosomal recessive and excellent recessive patient have a poor vision with nystagmus and often significant myopia with an abnormal fundus appearance, Ogashi disease and a fundus LB pectus. Ogashi disease is an autosomal recessive. The fundus has unusual golden yellow color in a light adapted state, which become normal after prolonged dark adaptation, meso or meso nakamura phenomena. So Ogashi disease is basically have a phenomena which is known as a meso phenomena or meso nakamura phenomena in which what happen is when there is a light, uh, state the fundus will be golden yellow color 
but after the dark attestation the furnace will become normal rod function is absent after 30 minutes of dark adaptation but recovers to near normal level after a prolonged period of a dark adaptation so rod function usually after the normal dark adaptation time is absent but after a prolonged dark adaptation become normal then there is a fundus albipectus is an autosomal recessive or dominant its condition that may be the same entity as a retinitis punctata albicans they can uh, both be caused by the mutation in the RLPB1 gene. The fundus shown multitude of a subtle ye tiny yellow white spots in the posterior pole, sparing the fovea, sometimes the macula and extending to the periphery. So usually they are yellowish white spots that are usually present at the posterior pole that will spare the fovea and sometimes macula and extend to the periphery. In contrast to the retinitis punctata albicans, the retinal blood vessels, optic discs, peripheral fields and visual equity are believed to remain normal, though the natural history is not yet absolutely defined. Fundus, auto, uh, fundus uh, fluorescent angiography show mortal uh, hyperfluorescence indicating depigmentation of the RPE. The ERG is variable abnormal, variably abnormal, both cones and rods may be affected. 12.22 is showing us a meso phenomenon in Ogochi disease. So you can see the uh, golden brown fundus in a light adapted state and a normal in the dark adapted state. This is a fundus albipunctus which is showing us a clinical appearance. So there are multiple uh, yellowish white uh, spots and uh, FA showing the motile hyperfluorescence. Then there is a Congenital monochromatism, so which is known as a achromatopsia. This is a group of a congenital disorder in which the colors cannot be perceived and visual acuity is reduced, particularly in brightly illuminated environment, hemaralopia. So basically, there is a uh, color vision is decreased and visual acuity is sometimes generally reduced and in especially in a darkly, uh, brightly illuminated environment, which is known as hemaralopia. Mutation affecting the cone-specific cyclic uh, nucleotide-gated uh, CNG channel beta-3 and alpha-3 subunits are responsible for about 50% and 25% of the complete achromatopsia respectively. Animal models of the disease have shown successful restoration of the cone-mediated vision following gene therapy for the CNGA3 and CNGB3 mutation. So basically there is a mutation in the CNG uh, gene and if you uh, restore, uh, do gene therapy with the CNG gene then uh, uh, there is a restoration especially in uh, animal models. So there is a rod monochromatism which is a complete achromatopsia and blue cone monochromatism which is an incomplete achromatopsia. So rod monochromatism which is a complete achromatism in Ron monochromatism, autosomal recessive, visual equity is poor, typically 6 by 60. So it is a complete, so visual equity is poor. There is a congenital nystagmus and photophobia, so there is going to be nystagmus and photophobia, so this is more severe form. Color vision is totally absent, all color appearing as a shade of gray. The macula usually appears normal, but uh, may be hypoplastic. The photopic ERG uh, cone is ERG is abnormal and scotopic may also be subnormal. So uh, photopic is usually abnormal and scotopic may be subnormal. Then there is a blue cone monochromatism, incomplete uh, achromatopsia. Blue cone uh, monochromatism, X-linked recessive features only slightly subnormal equity at 6 by 6 to 6 by 9 so vision is improved 6 by 9 to 6 by 9 but color vision is completely absent but the color vision is completely absent nystagmus and photophobia are not typical feature there is a normal macula the erg is normal except for the absence of cone response to red and white light so the cone will not respond to red and white light so that's it for the part 4. See you in the next lecture.